Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. This bonus episode is back up in the woodshed working on poem and yes I finally got to build that little helm and it is so adorable. I'm so looking forward to showing it to you. It worked out really really well. Let's jump back and uh, have a look at it. As always I'd love to send out a big thanks to my PayPal and Patreon supporters. Uh, as you folks know it's you that keep the show going. Okay let's get to work. And well welcome back to the boat shed. We're carrying on with MV poem and we're finally gonna get to that helm that I promised you. It's gonna be great. Okay, before I cut into any expensive mahogany, I'm gonna make a template for this um, helm <laughs> uh, because it's a little unusual. Um, but uh, anyway, let's, let, let's see how we do here. Uh, and then this needs to be an attractive curve of some sort. Okay, I've got the tape measure on. Uh, screw down there and I'm pretty happy with 48 inches so I'm just gonna okay so I've set up a template for the structure of the helm and it's going to sit pretty much here uh, with that surface across here and it'll end here so it's pretty much not fighting with the oh so gorgeous uh, armrest um, I'm happy with this. Very happy with this. I'm going to start to commit this into real mahogany. Oh my gosh. And we'll see what that starts to look like. much easier to do a really tight uh, curve like this in two cuts uh, because the piece you're cutting off will be much looser the second time. So when these are uh, connected at the end, there's going to be a mitered connection on that. So I have to be able to cut uh, miters in this and um, hoping that this saw is in nice shape. Oh, that's pretty good. That's awesome. Mirror smooth. Excellent. All right, folks, so this is ready for glue up. Now this is a bit precarious. Okay. You can sort of cheat. The glue will actually start to thicken up as you're working and it kind of holds everything together for you. Okay, I'm gonna be careful and not stress that joint um, before I start on this one. Cool. So the joint is looking pretty good, but I want to get some screws in this uh, fairly quickly to aid in clamping it. So uh, I'm going to have to do uh, some relatively precarious clamping work. If I pull too hard in one direction over the other, I am going to pull the joint apart. So I have to be very, very careful here. And then just put a little pressure on here. 
because of the nature of the ramp, uh, again, if I squeeze this too hard, it's going to spit the end piece off and likewise in the other direction. So let me just get some pressure on here and some pressure on here. Disregarding snapping, popping sounds. Okay. Okay, now that that's held relatively uh, securely, I can start to put a block inside here because there isn't enough material in these corners uh, to actually screw and then uh, bung that over afterwards. I'll be already through the, uh, the miter. So I have to put another block inside that I'm going to screw in uh, into both directions or probably only this direction from the outside and inside I'll go the other way. All right, well, I'm waiting for this to uh, set a little bit before I put that inner block in. I'm going to prepare the structural piece that's going to be at the other end. And um, this is basically what's going to attach the helm to the cabin side, as well as cantilevering down uh, to the stringer down there. And it'll also provide a way to conceal uh, control cables and things like that. Anyway, so this is basically going to go inside between the two sections uh, that I've already made here. Now the trick is the side of the cabin sides is slightly sloped. It's slightly sloped that much. So when this goes in here, it has to be canted ever so slightly um, to take that into account. So I have to rip this with this same bevel, uh, both sides and have it still fit perfectly in here. So it's, it's a little bit precarious, but it, it shouldn't be that hard. All right, so I'll begin by setting the blade over to match this. Somewhere, somewhere there. <laughs> All right, so the uh, my special double bevel piece uh, now currently just barely tucks in there. Uh, that's great. So I'll get geared up to attach it at the far end there. Woohoo! Okay, so I'm preparing a little backer block for inside here, and it was actually slightly beveled, so it was a bit of a work, a bit tapered anyway. Um, the only thing I'm going to do before I screw and glue it in is put a slight chamfer on the inside corners just in case there's a little bit of a bump of, on the uh, glue coming through there and that'll make sure it doesn't bump into that. So that's pretty easily done. Okay, to install this now that I know that it fits perfectly, it basically goes in here. And um, I have to sort of juggle in my head to remember which way the hull, the side of the cabin is sloped this way. So I have to set this back a bit so this will be trimmed off. And um, it's sitting there quite nicely. Yeah, 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 I like that. Okay, so let's get a schwack of glue in there and uh, get this glued up. About to there, and about to there. There we go. And I'll just put the square on it to make sure I'm in the right ballpark, but wow, that's that's perfect. Let's see what I can do though. Okay, I think I can risk releasing them both together and uh, that will uh, allow me to carry on here. I think I'll go at an inch and four inches. Not too bad, not too bad, not bad at all.
Now this miter turned out so well, I hate to put a little ease on it, but I have to put just the slightest because it's ridiculous to have it that sharp. I like that combination of eased and sharp. Oh yeah. And a trial fit. I've had to make some modifications to the riser down there uh, for it to sit absolutely nice in against the stringer here. So it's uh, on an angle and beveled to meet the stringer and beveled a little bit so that the angle is perfect against the, uh, the ceiling there. Anyway, I'm really, really, really happy with this. I'm gonna put a couple of uh, screws in temporarily and uh, we'll start to see what we can do about a top. Crucial here is that this is parallel straight across the boat, which isn't perpendicular to the cabin side, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, but I've done several shots at this, and if you look at it, it is perfectly lined up with the armrest here. So actually that's come together very, very nicely. Excellent, excellent. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Next is the top. Now, this is gonna sit in here with a slight overhang on all three sides. Uh, you'll see it also is gonna have to be um, uh, notched around this vertical post here. But before I do that, I have to scribe it to the cabin side, which is not parallel here. So let me just... Okay, that'll at least solve one part of the problem. And with that miter cut, it now sits square against the cabin size and it's square against this. Ooh, this is starting to really come together. Okay, so I just need to mark this out. And perfect, absolutely perfect, perfect, perfect. Love it. Oh my gosh, oh, I'm loving it. Now, there's something I don't think I've shown you yet, and that is this beautiful bronze engine and transmission control. Um, very much, in fact, I think it's the same brand as the one on Zephyrus. Uh, however, it's a slightly different model. I picked this up in a consignment um, chandlery in Portland. I'm very, very happy about it. Plus, even though it's a cable drive assembly, I think with the way this is set up, I can easily turn it into a push-pull a Morse control, um, kind of in a stealth fashion. Anyway, it's going to sit right about there. And uh, oh, I j oh my gosh, it's for with the oh, it's fantastic. Anyway, so let me explain a bit what's going to happen to the top here. It's going to be cut right about here, and uh, ten inches over, it's going to be cut again. Uh, this is going to be screwed down. This last three inches is going to be screwed down, but the middle section is going to be on a piano hinge right here, where it will open up and reveal the helm controls, the engine uh, gauges and the few switches they need in here. It'll give me um, a roughly five and a half by 10 inch uh, panel. Uh, by the way, the beta marine panel that comes with the engine I'm hoping for is five and a half by seven. So it'll give me a little strip of switches. Not that that will be my final um, instrument panel, but I think it would do for now. Anyway, and this last three inches provides a support for it. So it'll stay out here as a bit of a shelf um, uh, to put binoculars on or something while you're working a notebook. Anyway, closes up nice and tidy. Oh, I, I just, I just love it. Just love it. Okay, now that was pretty stressful. It is not an exact science, this kind of work. Did get a tiny little blowout out here. Um, but I'm very, very pleased. Well, I'm pleased because it's done. Okay, okay, okay. As if that wasn't stressful enough, this is the section of the helm top that's going to open up to reveal the instrument panel, gauges, switches, etc. I am also going to uh, route out a dish into uh, the bottom side of this so that when it opens, uh, not only do I have a little fiddled, in other words, with little fences, boats we call those fiddles, a uh, place to put binoculars, pencils, something like that uh, while underway, 
but it'll also provide more clearance for switches and gauges and things when it's closed down over the instrument panel. So I'm pretty excited about it, but making sure I get the stops right so I meet the corners right is going to be seriously stressful. Okay, okay. I'm gonna shoot for a three quarter of an inch fiddle around the outside. Um, so what I'm gonna do is set the fence for three quarters of an inch. That part is pretty easy. And then turning the blade this way, I'm going to set the fence. Um, not, I'm not going to put a block because I want to run against it. I'm going to make a mark right here and that will at least give me some indication of where to stop and start. The other thing with a router is actually you can sort of hear it uh, when it's just touching the next side, but that does mean you're starting to cut into it. So Yeah, now I could set up blocks at the ends, but the problem with that is that I'd have to set up two sets of blocks one for running in this direction one for running in this direction and the likelihood of that actually providing a more accurate cut than what I've got proposed here is not that much I'm gonna say trying to perfect these corners any more than that is going to push my luck. A little bit of sanding and that will be quite nice. Now just take, take the middle out and that's pretty straightforward. Well, I don't mind telling you, that was stressful. Where this hinged panel meets the fixed panel that is going to um, have the engine controls on it, I actually have to put a slight bevel in the ends um, because when a door or panel meets another one, the geometry of the um, hinge means that they'll actually hit. So you need to slightly slope uh, both this face and this face so that they'll meet together and miss each other and you can end up with a nice tight joint. Oh, I nearly made a very bad mistake. I was about to make the same cut on the stationary piece, except I forgot that the back edge of this already has a miter on it. So now, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've got it back in place. Everything is lined up nicely. And uh, when this opens, it'll fold over and sit against there. Uh, with this little tray and here will be my instrument panel and again it's recessed uh, with these new dados uh, so that I can put a larger panel in here. Now what I need to do is put these little extra ends on here. These little supports will sit just underneath there just like that um, so that there's a side to this little um, bay for instruments uh, but I wanted to wait till it was installed so that I could absolutely nail it in other words get it in exactly the right location perfectly flush obviously inside here we'll need some more structure at some point um, to make sure it's really really stiff because of course the wheel goes on here uh, but I'm not going to do any of that just yet until I know exactly what I'm doing about an instrument panel Okay, oh my gosh, I'm loving this. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Okay, this piece and this. Now this is a bit precarious because to align the next block, I gotta hold this down and slide this in place. Hold this in place with the clamp, oops. <laughs> Good thing that wasn't actually attached yet.
All right, so if I relay out the panels again, I'm going to clamp the far one on um, so that I can make sure it stays put while I take the middle one out and uh, do the final adjustment to screw it on. Fabulous, fabulous. Well, folks, it's it's that time. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I don't have a piano hinge now, but when I bring up a piano hinge next week, I'll be able to uh, do the final install of this. Oh, it's nice and snug. There we go. And there it is, folks. The tiniest, tiny little helm I could possibly imagine. And I just love it. I absolutely love it. It's completely distinct from the bench. I like that about it. The controls just fit. It just feels so good here. And it opens so neat. Of course, it's going to have to be loosened a little bit. And it needs a hinge to create that fabulous little tray and the instrument panel. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh yes, can't wait to get this into use. Oh my gosh, I love it. I just love it. I just love it. Well, hello and welcome to the Travels with Jordy midweek beer of the week. And I've been invited for dinner aboard MV Zephyrus with Lady Zephyrus. Thanks ever so much. You're welcome. Meet, not meet. Well, those of you who haven't met before, meet Finnegan. Um, those of you who have met him before, hasn't he grown? <laughs> he's a little terror. Yeah, he's a little terror <laughs> at this point. Anyway. Um, five months old. Five months old and <laughs> definitely... A, uh, a, a a lot of pup. Anyway, I'm extraordinarily fond of him. He's Are you really training tips? Uh, train, yeah, exactly. Uh, he's smarter than I am, no doubt about it. All right, we're really excited about the beer. We've just been to our favorite little uh, liquor store uh, here in Victoria called the Strath. Fantastic spot if you're ever in Victoria. Anyway, we're going to Yukon Brewing. Uh, which we've had stuff from them before, and it's absolutely fantastic. They're a fantastic brewery. And this is their citrusy wheat. Now, I've never heard of that particular combination before, but it just seems appropriate. We had a lovely walk out to the beach today. One nice thing about living in Victoria, it's a 20-minute walk from right downtown here to, uh, to be able to walk on a pretty much unspoilt beach looking out over the... Um, Strait of Juan de Fuca, it, it, just lovely. Anyway, so it was a it was a perfect day, and this is a perfect, oh, maybe not quite so close, um, <laughs> beer to end that Somebody day. Somebody else likes beer. Too. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, ladies Everest, let's see what we think of Yukon Brewing's citrusy wheat. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's yummy. It might be a little more citrusy than I was expecting. <laughs> I it's, like it. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very citrusy. Mm -hmm. um, it's good. It's good. It's I not need, sweet citrusy. I need a little more like... sunshine, maybe, mm. to enjoy it quite the way. Are you afraid he's going to put his... Oh, yes, I was quite afraid, or at least knock it over. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Well, we have uh, very little paperwork to get <coughs> through this midweek. Uh, last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy t-shirt is Tanka. Um, I, I'm sure I haven't pronounced this correctly and I'm even more embarrassed because I think at some point you actually told me how to pronounce it and I, I, I couldn't find it. So it's T apostrophe A-I-R-N apostrophe K-A. Well, you've won yourself a Travels Jewelry t-shirt. Get a hold of me and we'll make sure you get your shirt. Congratulations. Cheers. <laughs> I'd like to thank and um, very happy to be able to do so a new Patreon, Paul McCormick. Thanks ever so much, Paul, for coming aboard. I'm so grateful for your help. Cheers. Cheers. And we're going to jump right back down to the... He's getting a little into it. To the word of the midweek. And the word of the midweek is simple. Yes, indeed. I was thinking... I just love the simplicity of the new helm on the poem. It's all I need. 
but it's more than I need. It's beautiful. It's functional. It's I'm just so excited about it. I can't wait to show it to you uh, opening up with a new panel inside and all set up. But anyway, simple. You know what to do with it. Cheers. Simple. Simple. See you uh, next week. Hey, Finn? Finny, 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 finny. Who's that? Who's that? I'm going to step right over the table. Here comes the fib. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have the... Oh, no. I can't show this fib because I can't show that screw.